Hello everyone. In today's episode, we will mostly deal with construction, fine tuning, and general organization. I spent the last few episodes planning, so it is time to actually wait for them to bear fruit. Now that we have these two new construction offices, we can start moving a couple vehicles over and buy a few new ones. We will also finalize the oil setup and give it a test build just to see if we can reach it without problems. We will also start producing coal very soon, so we can look forward to that too. First of all, I think we can remove the plans at this point. We have the first site that we can use as a template in the future, so the original plans are only taking up valuable land. I will also pause one of the new towers. I will resume construction once the first one is done. Having both be active is unnecessary, it would only tie up more construction machinery. Now, about moving stuff over to the new offices. I think reassigning the road building vehicles, along with their open hull carrier would be a good start. But first, it seems the new gravel streets around the towers are blocking access to them. So I'll quickly place a service connection. I will also unpause the buildings that will act as the backbone of this construction yard, namely the gas station, the bus stop, and the distribution house. I will also move the bulldozers over, they can be more useful in a more central location. Plus the open haul trucks, so we have something to carry all these machines. I think it would be best if we moved all the dumpers from the border to the town CO. Our biggest issue is that they tend to drain the original gravel storage way too fast, so having them use the one with the truck loading facility should be better for everyone. They only have to drive a little longer to reach the asphalt back at the border. Let's not forget to finish up the road upgrades. We still have a couple pieces that need asphalt on them. I'll just make sure I don't block access to anything, and we are good. The vehicles, that are not meant to carry resources, can all be moved over to the new offices. That includes the excavator and the road crane truck. I mentioned before that we need to have more buses to move people to construction sites. So a third bus will help quite a bit. The coal processing facility is almost done, so I will start moving workers to the mine now. Next, I will strategically pause and unpause certain sections of rail tracks, so we only have to build one side for now. In the beginning, we will only need one track, as only one train will use this part, namely the one moving oil to the power plant. Double tracking was necessary up until the construction yard, because more than one train will be running on it, but only one will haul oil for a while.
Once these last pieces are upgraded, the town streets are finally done. Adding a couple more open haul trucks will speed things up, expecting only one of them to move all these machines alone was a bit much. It seems the coal processing is just out of range for the new construction offices, so I'll manually assign it, in order for the road crane to move there to speed up construction. And we are about to start making coal. The mine is ready to go already, with its buffer full of raw coal ore, waiting to slide down to processing. I'll of course add it to the bus stop, with the fire station still having priority over everything. And with that, we are producing usable coal. I will rearrange the coal import line, so the trucks will load up at the aggregate storage instead of unloading, and I'll remove the customs house. I will only move coal to the heating plant. I want my trucks to act as a buffer, so I will tell them to fully unload everything they have at the heating plant. And that of course means we can get rid of most of them running on that line. We have two parking spots, so I will start out with two dumper trucks. They will slowly deplete themselves, and while one is a way to pick up more, the other can take over. Thankfully, some of them arrived empty, so it was easy to choose which ones to sell. We have two buses working for the coal mine right now. I think a third one will give a better balance. Four trucks remain. I'll sell two more, and see how they cope. Spoiler alert, I will end up using three in the end. Time to start dealing with the rails around the construction yard. 
I only have to make sure we give each train enough room to park without them blocking any junctions, and we are good. I'll mark where the minimum distance is for a 150 meters long platform, just as a reminder. And if you remember, we already measured the aggregate drop-off to already be that long. I decided not to bother giving the other two stations a carefully measured parking space. They will have an extra long driveway, but for such a low traffic area, it will be fine. Of course, we will need a crossing in this junction, so everyone can go where they need to go, and everyone can reach the track that leads out to the rest of the network. It is very likely that each station will have only one train each, but just in case we need more, I'll extend the length of this branch, so we have at least one train's worth of queuing space. Since those two signals in the middle were unnecessary, I think we can move this crossing up a little bit. There we go. Don't worry about the signals right now. They are obviously just placeholders. And the length of the queue parking is enough. We can start planning the junction. Relatively far away from other junctions, and if we surround it with some trees, it will look okay I think. Here, I wasn't sure why the construction assign tool was having trouble with the distribution house. But then I realized that we still need to build the bus stop to allow traffic through. I also told the border DO to start moving fuel to the new gas station, but there is no power yet, so it didn't do anything. And the coal storage is full to the brim. Maybe it's time to give steel production a bit of a boost. Instead of using the microbuses, I think we can start ferrying workers with proper higher capacity ones. I said before they were a temporary measure, and it is now where we switch them out. Eight full-size buses should be okay for now. We only need to sell all these barcuses, and the line should work much better. The first tower is complete, and it is already close to being full. A nice little boost to our active worker population. And it can reach everything important it needs to function. Before long, we will have more young adults wanting a place of their own, so we can safely unpause the second tower.
This is where I decided to go with three dumpers instead of two for the heating plant. The one that is still unloading is close to empty, and the one coming to replace it is still fairly far away. It would be just fine for now, but I'm not sure how they would deal with winter, so just to be safe, I'll add a third one. It seems our gravel production is having issues with the incoming raw stone being too infrequent. Time to add one more truck to each quarry. With the bus stop complete, we can finally reach the distribution house with the construction offices. Since we need power for the fuel here, I think we can start building the substation. I think our best bet would be the transformer at the oil fields. Now, I will start with an underground cable, but sooner or later I will realize that the amount of work days and gravel required is astronomical, so I will switch it out for a regular set of power poles at the end of the episode. Here, I don't know why this piece of track was paused. I distinctly remember unpausing it. Oh well, no big deal. And speaking of rail, I think it's high time we bought that faster track layer. We will need to take out a loan for it, but it will be worth it. Those prefab blocks are getting kind of funky there. This of course massively increased the amount of workers required, so I think we can also expand the commuter line for the rail construction office. Another one of those situations, where completion is halted by the last delivery being less than a single ton of materials. And both towers are complete. I highly doubt even these will give us enough workers to see unemployment above 2%, so we will need more houses sooner or later.
Since we will need power at the construction yard soon, I think we can deal with this high voltage switch now. I only need to sever this old line and connect them up the right way. It will disrupt the steel mill for a bit, but I'm okay with that. Since we have this extra power connection available right here, I think I will add it to the other lines and leave it open-ended, so when we do need it, we won't have to deal with the full length of the wire. And just in case I do decide to move the border outpost's power supply to the steel mill's transformer, I'll leave some room. While not necessary just yet, I will hook up the rail power connector to the gas plant. It will be a while before we get to it, but I'd prefer it to be ready and waiting when we do. It seems a new harvester was released to the market. Our current ones are doing a fine job, so no need to replace them. Oh yeah! This guy is way faster than the other two. Just checking the town's power supply, and it looks to be doing okay right now. The most central substation is a bit close to its limit, but we are expanding away from it, so hopefully it will be okay. At this point I should have realized that this amount of work days are unfeasible. We will waste a bit of gravel on it, but it's a very cheap resource, so it won't be a big deal. Speaking of gravel, the quarries are still struggling to keep the processing plant fed, so I'll add another set of dumpers to them. Now that the distribution house is complete, the first thing I will tell it to do is to keep the local gas station well stocked. And might as well tell it to do the same with the construction offices too. Of course, it will not do anything until we have power to these buildings. 
Anyways, the oil field have power now, but the steel mills line is yet to be finished. Once we have power to the construction yard, we will be able to build a couple switches along the original high voltage line, because we won't be crippled by cutting power to our only asphalt and concrete facilities. Despite not producing any steel for a while now, the mill still have quite a bit of it left in its stocks, so I think we can safely add a couple more trucks to the distribution line. Not having to pay for steel any longer, and in fact, having so much that we are actively selling it, is a pretty big boost to the economy of our republic. and the steel mill is up and running again. Even with an EFA truck actively loading, the stocks are still going up. Pretty neat. We will need a turnaround, so our track layers can reach both sides of the construction yard's junction. As I said, the signals were placeholders. Don't worry, I'll give up on this underground cable soon enough. But, as a side benefit, it did make me realize that the current trucks were too small to load the excavator, so I knew we need to buy a bigger one for it. And it immediately leaves to work on that cable. Don't worry. Won't be too long before I give up. At this point, steel production is bottlenecked by the lack of iron. Adding a couple trucks will help with that. Watching myself renaming these lines, I just realized that I need to rename the coal import line to distribution. Something to note down for next time. It finally dawned on me that this is a pointless endeavor, we barely made progress even with an excavator. Time for plan B. This of course means using regular power poles. Yeah, the resource and work days required are a bit lower than before.
two deliveries took care of all the materials for this project. Quite a difference there. I'm starting to think that switching to overground poles may have been the best move here. And we're done. We only need to finish building the transformer at the oil side, and we'll have power. It seems some of the buildings were already in range, but not all. With all these dirt roads, I would have been surprised if they were. It appears there is a break in the oil pipes. Without using helicopters, our trucks wouldn't be able to reach it. I think I will have to redraw this one. And it's all one construction now. We'll be able to build everything. And I just remembered that I wanted to see if I can squeeze in one more oil pump on that hill, but we didn't have the earth moving machinery to do it. But now we do. It seems we can get 23% yield out of it. That's going to be worth it in my book. We already have an open connection on the fluid pump station, so once everything's built, we can get rid of the roads, and we will have a clear path for the pipes to reach it. Trucks are already busy moving materials over. Unpausing everything may have been a bit hasty, we only really need the transformer right now. We barely finished building that tower, and it's already close to half full. It seems I added the turnaround track a bit too early. The piece it's attached to is not yet finished, and it broke a long section into a couple smaller ones. And now the three track layers are busy elsewhere. The biggest trouble we face right now is the lack of workers. The amount of buses coming to pick them up is too high, and we cannot cope with the demand. It might be time to build a couple more apartment blocks. These modded ones are all made by three division so I consider them vanilla assets. Even the tall towers are official buildings, made by the devs. And I finally got around to removing these mud side roads. They were in the way of our new housing project. I need to be careful where I put these. I cannot expand any closer to the border outpost, due to the pollution put out by the heating plant there, and cannot go south towards the industrial district for the same reason. Next to the hospital seems like the most sensible option. I cannot place them too close to each other either, those balconies prevent me from using that trick I did with the V-shaped housing complex. For the best result, I'll just go with my usual trick of using the white grid and the green dots as my guide. There we go. Perfectly spaced and perfectly aligned. Just the way I like it. I don't like having intersections so close to each other. But then again, this driveway is only ever going to be used for construction, and by pedestrians. So I think I can deal with it. For a little bit, I tried to connect them up with footpaths, but unfortunately that won't work. Building the oil extraction is a bit too early. 
I'll go ahead and pause them for now. I forgot to keep the transformer going though. That's something to immediately remedy in the next episode. Anyways, we are very close to the end, so I'll start doing my usual end episode monologue. We will definitely need to strike a better balance for the steel mill. Iron is definitely the bottleneck, but we are producing way more than we can use right now, so that is amazing. So I might leave it as is, we need excess coal anyways for the heating plant. I will also need to make sure to unpause the transformer at the oil field, and once the construction yard is done, we can start thinking about building that oil extraction apparatus. And you might have noticed that the channel reached 1000 subscribers. I cannot thank you enough for helping me reach this milestone. It was the best Christmas present I could ever ask for, so again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I hope you liked the video. If you did, dropping a like and subscribing to the channel just might motivate me to make more. Until then, see you later.